and worship on this Reformation Sunday. It's fun to look out and see so many of you wearing red. <clears throat> We're happy that you're here. We ask that you please fill out that worship registration card that's in the pew and put it in the offering plate because Sandy always wants to have that information. <laughs> We had an interesting conversation about the Reformation this morning, but since most of the people in the group had been to Germany on the same trip I was on, I didn't impart any information, any new information, but we had a good conversation. This is God's church, and as such, all are welcome at the communion table. Uh, the ushers will direct you forward. I will give you the bread, which you will then dip in the cup, the cup that's held by the assisting minister has two sections in it. The white is grape juice and the red is wine. So we hope you will all join us in this sacrament. I invite you to stand and join in the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, the one who forms us. Jesus, who bears the cross, the Spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. Amen. Let us bow before God in humility, confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others, for the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us, for the unjust demands we place on others in your creation, forgive us, for the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us, reveal us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved in Christ, God's justice stretches beyond all understanding. God's compassion is beyond compare. In Jesus, God is always making a new way for us. In Christ, you are already and always forgiven. Amen. Amen. Before we start the first hymn, I forgot to mention that we have a very special liturgy today, and I think you all got a note about that. And we will be singing more parts of the liturgy than we normally do, but everything we sing is based on hymn tunes. So you will be comfortable and enjoy it, I'm certain. Our gathering hymn is the Church of Christ of Every Age. <laughs>
all. And also to you.
got my glasses. <laughs> I was wondering. We understand that. <laughs> There's not too many people here who could read it without their glasses. No. <laughs> <laughs> the renewed covenant will not be breakable, but like the old covenant, it will expect the people to live upright lives. To know the Lord means that one will defend the cause of the poor and needy. <laughs> the renewed covenant is possible only because the Lord will forgive iniquity and not remember sin. Our hope lies in a God who forgets. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the old covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is a covenant that I'll make that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Word of wisdom, word of life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Paul's words stand at the heart of the preaching of Martin Luther and other Reformation leaders. No human <coughs> beings make themselves right with God through works of the law. We were brought in to a right relationship with God through the divine activity centered in Christ's death. This act is a gift of grace that liberates us from sin and empowers our faith in Jesus Christ. <coughs> Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For though the law comes, oh, or through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a gift. To the redemption, redemption that is Jesus Christ, whom God put forward as a sacrifice and atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did, he did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then, what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith, apart from works prescribed by the law. Word of wisdom, word of life. Thanks be to God.
eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus speaks of truth and freedom as spiritual realities known through his word. He reveals the truth that sets people from free. <coughs> and now the gospel. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Praise to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. High holy days like this are always fun in the church, but it was a surprise for me to, and I don't know why, it finally dawned on me a few years ago, that it is only in the Lutheran church that Reformation Sunday is a high holy day. <laughs> A Presbyterian friend said, well, we, we acknowledge Reformation, but I wouldn't call it a high and holy day. <laughs> Unfortunately, many, many of us who grew up in the church grew up that Reformation was a day of saying, we're not Catholic. We're Lutherans. We're not Catholic. Make sure you know we're not Papists. That is not what the Reformation is about. It is not what we celebrate. If we celebrate anything, Today, it is the call to continue to be a reforming church. We learn from history that we are called to always be changing and reforming and growing as Christians. I once saw a t-shirt that I regretted not buying. The printed words read, the truth will set you free, but first it will make you miserable. <laughs> As a seminary professor, Martin Luther struggled fiercely with God and with the Word of God. Luther's father was a strident, demanding man who ruled his family with an iron fist. He wanted Luther to be a lawyer. And Luther had indeed just finished his law degree when he hit, was in the middle of a horrible electrical storm, and he was terrified of lightning. And he prayed, Sister Anne, Saint Anne, if you save me from this, I will become a monk. She did. Rocky went to the Augustinian monastery in Eifert, where he was educated, ordained, and became a professor. Martin was not one to just accept what he was presented with as facts, so maybe that's why I've always appreciated him. Because my mother would say, why can't you just take the answer I gave you? I don't know anymore. Quit asking me why. So he was probably smarter than he was. He was probably a little was too smart for his own good. And he wrestled with scriptures as he wrestled with God. As we are wont to do, Luther created God in the image of his father. Who, and God was a strident, demanding God whom he could not please. Who can please that strident, demanding parent or boss or those images in our lives? He went to confession several times a day if he had the opportunity trying to name every sin that he had committed because he was certain if he didn't name them all, none of them would be forgiven. And he tired out his confessors who kept trading around to each other because he wore them out. Finally, one said, Martin, all God wants is for you to love him. And he said, love him? I hate him. I hate this, his tyrannical demands on me. I can never meet up to his demands on me. 
It was in wrestling with this Romans text for today that Luther came out a changed man. <clears throat> Since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by his grace as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did not show his righteousness because his divine forbearance he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. And then, then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No. Not by the law of faith. For we hold that person is justified by faith apart from the works prescribed by the law. Luther understood that whatever he did, God still loved him. Whatever he did, God justified him. Whatever he did, he lived in God's grace. He no longer had to fight. God was not a tyrannical father, but was a loving <coughs> God. He gave his grace to Martin. He no longer had to battle. Our reading from John chapter 8 is brief, a mere six verses. Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free in me. First, I have, to, I have to address the point that those Jews obviously have forgotten their history. We've never been a slave to anyone. Um, what was it that happened to you in Egypt? <laughs> What was that little walk across the desert that took 40 years when Moses was leading you to freedom from the Egyptians? Forgetting history only makes trouble for us because history is what brought us to where we are today. We must not deny history. But let's go back to verse 31. If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John scholar Caroline Lewis from Luther Seminary asserts that it should be translated, if you abide in my word. Abide, that's to live in, that's, it's to be embraced in, it's to immerse ourselves in. If we immerse ourselves, if we abide by his word. We are, you are truly my disciples. Now, Jesus is not talking about some objective truth. The truth here he's not talking about is not believing that Jesus was a man, was God's son who walked the earth, uh, was killed on the cross and died and was resurrected. But the truth is the truth of who he was as son of God, Savior, human being who walked the earth. The truth is what he came to give us and what he taught his disciples about love, about servitude, about looking for justice for all people. The freedom he's proclaiming is not the freedom from some human over us. You can be in prison and still be free in Christ. The freedom is to become fully who God created.
created us to be. The freedom that Luther found in the Romans text was the freedom to be the man he was, called by God to change the church. Freedom to study and teach and preach the love and grace of God. Freedom to be the man God created him to be. It's the freedom that we have, knowing that whatever we do, we are beloved of God. I always told my Sunday school teachers, I don't much care the content of what you teach them as much as I care that every child comes out of Sunday school knowing that they are loved by God and that they will always belong to God and they will always have a place in the church, no matter where they've been in their lives. That's the freedom that we have in Christ. The freedom to explore, to create, to challenge, to think, to become a new person every day. It's a freedom that never runs out. We never get too old to learn something new, to understand ourselves. We never get too old to become more kind and more loving and more gracious. I grew up in a home in which I was verbally and sexually abused by my father. I spent many, many, many years in therapy, first trying to understand why my life wasn't working. And eventually healed from that abuse. It was a long, hard road, but I knew that God was right there with me, holding me and healing me. I got to the point where I could forgive my parents and accept that they did the best they could with who they were. I also saw, understood that there was much, much good that I got from my parents. Facing the pain and misery of my past freed me to become who God created me to be. I had left parish ministry, telling people that I never say never, but if I do go back to parish ministry, we will all know that God has a great sense of humor. <laughs> Here I am. <laughs> Here I am. I felt called back to parish ministry finally because I had had so much healing and I was so freed up from my past that I had to proclaim the gospel again. I had to come back and be a pastor of word and sacrament. I was compelled by the Spirit to enter into this work again, which of course is not easy all the time. It's not always fun. Uh, believe me, it's, it's never been as fun as it is here. <laughs> but because I confronted the truth, I was set free. I was set free. Being freed by Christ gives us the courage to examine who we are, how we treat one another, how we treat ourselves, what we think and what we believe. Being freed by Christ gives us more access to our creativity, more access to joy, more access to enjoying living in God's created world. Luther struggled all of his life, but the freedom that he knew, that, that he knew after wrestling with Romans, and he continued to wrestle with the scriptures for his whole life, but he saw grace in them at every turn. He could now hear God's love. He could hear the gospel message that Jesus died for us, that Jesus came to earth, that God came to earth in Jesus to show us how to live and to love and to become more complete. We will never be complete this side of the resurrection, but we can grow every day until the day that we die. By freedom, by in Christ, you are set free. Set free from anything that holds you back. Set free from 
injuries, set free from resentments, set free from the ideas that stifle your living in a world. And freed for service, freed for love, freed for working for justice in our world. And I don't know any better news than that. Amen. Justice, war, or religious conflict, especially between Israelites and Palestinians and in Ukraine. God of grace, 
receive our prayer. God, our champion, you are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Draw near to all who suffer, especially for those who lost family members or friends in the senseless violence in Lewiston. Among ourselves, we rejoice with Candy Wood in the birth of a new great-grandson, Dominic Henry Harry Henry. We pray also for the safe delivery of her next great-grandson due within the next couple of weeks. We pray for Di David Kalkovia's recovery from the surgical procedure this past week and for Frank Stanley's recovery from back surgery. We pray for Sandy's brother, Mike Hornbeck, who was recently hospitalized from complications with cancer. For Maria Hant Hernandez, for Diane Kyle, for Ryan Graber, for David Witt, for Janet Sims, for Lisa and Judy Mello, for Nancy Sampson, for Debbie Mahegan, for Edie Graber, who fell this week and sprained her ankle, and for all of those on the prayer wall. For whom else do you pray? God of grace, we sing our prayer. prayer. God, our reformer, you make all things new. Free us from complacency. Open us to unexpected ways and kindle zeal in us for the future. We pray for young people affirming their baptism. With them, stir in us a desire for your wisdom. God of grace, we sing yes. our prayer. God, our Savior, you made yourself known in the lives of all who have died in the hope of your grace. We give thanks for the witness of reformers like Martin Luther and for all whose examples have brought us closer to you. God of grace, who is our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let's greet one another with a sign of God's peace. 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 We will receive our offering.
things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, to our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Oh.
Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. Thank you for worshiping with us and these thoughts for attendance heart. Gentle flowers are placed to the glory of God by Karen Como for Phil Como's birthday yesterday. Today, following worship, please join us in the fellowship hall for coffee and juice. And then on Wednesday, we have midweek Bible study together. It's also continuing at 10 a.m. on Zoom. You don't even have to take off your slipper. <laughs> Next Sunday, you get the dull dead at 9 o'clock. And but remember, they like saving time. Remember to set your clock, clock back one hour Saturday night. My favorite night of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce and Concern, Sandy Wood's granddaughter, Summer, gave birth to Dominic Andre Henry last Monday, October 23rd. We rejoice with the family on this special occasion. And as mentioned, uh, each, uh, we need greater in your prayers to the fall at home and sprain an ankle in the process. Stewardship, we remember your pledge cards for 2024. That will help us plan ahead. And donations. Maryland collected $605 from Gloria Day last Sunday's crop walk. Over $10,000 was donated overall. We are currently focused on maritime seafarers shoe box kits. Make your own and however donate $20 for Karen Como to do the shopping for you. We are also collecting worn clothes for the seafarers. See the list of items needed and other donation stations in the fellowship hall. We got a box. Thank you, George. CERT, the emergency response team in Naples is having their Naples Ready Fest this Saturday off IPM Way near the Second Street Bridge. Um, be sure to grab a, a, a flyer for details. Looking ahead, Wednesday, November the 15th, is there, a, there is a grow meeting here at 7 p.m. in the sanctuary. You might ask, what does that mean? <laughs> this is in connection with the call of the new pastor. And the grow meeting is kind of the first meeting. And it stands for G is goal, R is reality, O is obstacle, and W is way forward. And so you're thinking, what does that have to mean? Synod and, and we have two issues. Synod doesn't know what the capabilities of this church are in relationship to calling a new pastor. We don't have an appreciation for what calling a new pastor in today's environment really means. The world meeting is an opportunity to kind of start working on both those issues. So that's why we want to talk about goals, where we might go, obstacles that might prevent us from getting there, um, the realities uh, or the reality first and then the obstacles, and then try to arrive at a way forward. We're, their Senate is sending a person to uh, help us with this, but be warned, this person is merely a facilitator. She's already told me that the people we are going to be are doing most of the talking. And I didn't know if you, if you realize that when we're doing announcements now, we have yellow um, portions, which is the only portion we're supposed to stick to. So obviously I went off script. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so if you want the full scoop on this stuff, you can pick up a copy of these announcements as you leave. Thank you. And there's one more that I neglected to get in the announcements for this week. And that is next Sunday is All Saints. When we remember the saints in our lives who have passed, and I don't know what your tradition is, my uh, tradition is, if there's anybody in your life that you care about who has passed in the last year, please make sure that Sandy gets that information in the church office. It will be in the bulletin, and we will be praying for Thanksgiving for each of those people. So you all know how to get all of Sandy, and uh, 
please, please let her know. You know, you can text her, you can call her cell phone, you can call the church phone, you can email her. Sandy's very available. <laughs> so, so please be in touch. Stand and receive God's blessing. The glory of God, Jesus Christ, the name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. And Amen.